Do you often wonder where you came from? The carbon, oxygen, calcium in your body? 90% of you was made in supernovae, the explosive deaths of massive stars. One such supernova went off in our cosmic backyard, and it was so bright you could have seen it with the naked eye. It was spotted in the year 1987, and so supernova 1987A became a historic event, one that was set to confirm perhaps even conclude the entire field of stellar astrophysics. But to the shock and dismay of the community, this most well-studied celestial event of our time defied all conventional notions of how we thought about stars. Because until then, theory would have told you that a supernova only occurred when a red supergiant, a fluffy red star about a thousand times the diameter of the sun, collapsed and exploded. But the star that was found to have lit the skies in 1987 was a hot, dense blue supergiant, only 50 times the size of the sun. This led to one of the most puzzling questions of 20th century science. Why was the parent star of supernova 1987A blue and not red? And this is the very question I attempted to answer in my thesis. Now, there was another peculiar aspect about this event. Around the central site of the explosion, there were three rings of material observed. These were ejected by the parent star well before it actually exploded. No standard model could explain how this may have happened, because standard models were built for single stars, despite the fact that we observe 80% of the stars in our universe live in binary systems with companions. So, in my thesis, I hypothesized that the blue star of 87A may have come about from the merger of two stars to become one. And for this, I ran a number of different computer simulations with a variety of initial conditions. And lo and behold, I found that six of my models resembled exactly the progenitor of 87A, and these were the first ones in published literature to do so. Unexpectedly, we found that most of the simulations ended up making blue stars that would explode like this one, which led us to conclude that perhaps 87A was really not a rare event, and there must be many more like it going off in the universe, waiting for us to record them. This goes to show that despite binary star systems being the most common, we don't really understand them very well, and they're yet to be an integral part of standard stellar theory. Events like this point out how crucial it is we include them not only to further our understanding about the lives of stars, but in fact of the origin of all life itself. Thank you very much.